I'm Bridget Fettesi, and this is your Dumpster Fire for the weeks of November 21st to December 4th. And the unicorns dance while the world burns, world burns, world burns. I'm warning you all, I might cry any minute. <laughs> Uh oh boy. Are you having one of those hormonal it's crazy. A- attacks? No, last night I dropped a bottle of water and just started <laughs> sobbing. <laughs> it was my own fault too because it was the this bottle. Uh-huh. And I filled it and then I forgot to like fully screw it. Because something happened with hope and I got distracted. And then I went to grab the bottle and it just <laughs> dropped all over the floor. And then I was just standing in front of my water cooler, like sobbing, <laughs> filling up the bottle. <laughs> We have new lights. Thank you, Brent. Thank, Thank you, Brent. Brent. Luna's here. Say hello. Luna. Ciao. First of all, we would like to thank Locals, one of our sponsors of this show. Locals is for independent creators like all of us. Locals is great for you if you want to grow your audience, get subscribers, and they give you all the tools to publish, operate, and grow all in one place. You also own the keys to your own kingdom. So it's very empowering for creators. This is where Fetacy.com is hosted. You can publish your content, engage with your supporters, and make money from subscriptions all on Locals.com. And if you're not a creator and you just want to check out some of your favorite creators, go to Locals, look who's on there, and subscribe to Fetacy.com. <laughs> all right, here we go. Old in chief. Oh my gosh. Biden sounds like someone else in his recent press conference. This worldwide effort we're leading won't solve the problem of high gas prices overnight. Biden sounds like his eye is about to start bleeding any minute in this creepy ass (laughs) press conference that sounds nothing like him and looks like he had his voice dubbed by George Clooney, as Stephen (laughs) Miller mentioned. And when I heard it, I was like, it does sound a little bit like George Clooney. And then his doctor came out, the like official doctor on official White House paper and said he has the colloquially known frog in his throat. I'm like, I love the 1920s diagnosis that he gets. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. Out of the well. Is that doctor from the time that he was born? I think he was. He has a Pepe the Frog in his throat. <laughs> Ew. Oh. Ew. Only the very online people are going to get that joke. Maggie's like, I don't, like, get, I it. don't get it. I'm looking around <laughs> me like, what? Maggie's like, who's Pepe you the mean Frog? Pepe Le Pew? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't Different he canceled? Animal. <laughs> Different animal. I literally saw that running through your mind. Like, <laughs> who the hell do they, t- who do they mean? <laughs> Sam, you were joking that uh, in the text messages, like, it's he's in late onset puberty. Yeah. When they went up his butt for his colonoscopy, <laughs> his balls finally dropped. <laughs> <laughs> There's no end in pandemic. Fauci again claims to be the science. (laughs) He went off on some tangent on an interview and he was talking about how it's dangerous if you basically criticize him because by proxy, he is the science. Yeah, he represents. I represent the science. (laughs) They're really criticizing science because I represent science. I'm going to be saving lives and they're going to be lying. I represent the science. I can't do a very good Fauci accent. It reminded me of that scene in Malice where he's like, I am God. I am God. <laughs> or the freaking dread, whatever your are nerdy, dread. judge, significant dread. others. Yeah. I am the law. <laughs> I am the law. Like, <laughs> Slice the law. Like, no, no. We are surrounded by nerds and it's okay because we are nerds as well. I'm pretty much probably the least nerdy because I was a drug addict. Yes, yeah. that is true. <laughs> You're like the cool nerd. <laughs> <laughs> but back to Fauci. No, Fauci, what's dangerous is saying that you, one man, represents the science. It's defined in the dictionary for now, although it'll probably be Fauci's face soon. A, sy- <laughs> a systematic enterprise that builds and organizes knowledge in the form of testable explanations and predictions about the universe. You are not God, Dr. Fauci. Although I know, given the past couple of years, you probably think you are. I just can't believe all these f***ers have us shoveling s*** for Big Pharma. Mm -hmm. He's a Christmas ornament now, too. Oh, Sam sent us that text. I was like, (laughs) what the holy hell is this? But then, on the heels of his moronic statements, there's always another parade of f***ing 
talking more on Talking Heads who say things like... He doesn't represent science to them. He represents Joseph Mengele, Dr. Joseph Mengele, uh, the, doc the Nazi doctor who did experiments on Jews during the Second World War and in the concentration camps. Exactly the same. And look, the left wing is coming after the right wing and saying that anybody who makes a Hitler comparison should be like banned from the media or whatever, which if you're going to play by those rules, I hate to tell you, left wing media, you're not going to have many people working anymore because that would make most of MSNBC and half of CNN unemployable by those rules. But these comparisons are ridiculous on their face because Dr. Fauci isn't making people dance before he goes and puts them in freaking crematoriums. <laughs> Why do I need to say this? <laughs> There's a great meme. Bethany Mandel shared it on Twitter. And it's like, should you compare somebody to the Holocaust? Is it the Holocaust? Yes. <laughs> Is it not the Holocaust? No. <laughs> Don't make these comparisons. It's everywhere now, too. Yeah. Everywhere. everywhere. Like, everyone, people on the right are calling them concentration camps in Australia because people have to be quarantined. It's the like hyperbole is already at 11, and then it's comparing things to the fucking Holocaust. That's it makes it even more outrageous to me because of like, we have a friend who's a Holocaust survivor, and it's, and we've interviewed him for the in podcasts and you hear the stories and you're like how read a f***ing book uh -huh. mm -hmm. how can you even make this comparison with a straight face or go watch schindler's list if you can't be yeah. bothered to read a book <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you do all of your research on parlor <laughs> you know who's making this comparison morons morons <laughs> journalism Chris Cuomo is suspended at CNN after he used his resources to target Andrew Cuomo's accusers. And just like that, Cuomo sexual t-shirts everywhere become jizz rags overnight. <laughs> the Tubin was sitting right there when CNN made this announcement, and I feel like it was just like a wink to their audience. Like, don't worry, we're suspending him, but he'll be back because you can jerk off on Zoom in front of your employees and it doesn't matter here on CNN. He should have been fired. Anyone else would have been fired. He should have just probably taken a leave of absence when that story broke and he came out and he didn't. Mm -hmm. Instead, he was like, I'm not going to speak about this and then continued to use his platform and his journalistic resources to look into who the leads were on like women who are going to come forward. So ridiculous. And I don't expect much from these journalists because they're not really ethical journalists. They're all propagandists. They like to pretend they're journalists. Yeah, so he's definitely using his internal sources to track accusers, which is, seems really unethical to me. Yeah, you can't do that. But then people are like, oh, no, he's like the brother. It's a brother thing. I'm like, fine, I get it. I get protecting your siblings, but you don't get to just like protect your sibling and be an ethical journalist. This is why you never trust a dude with nipple rings or his brother or Italians. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> well, you can trust fancy Italian makeup artists. Yes, of course. <laughs> this is the power of dumpster fire. We've single-handedly taken down Andrew Cuomo and Chris Cuomo now. If you get on the wrong side of dumpster fire, we're like the Italians. A small mafia will come out of our hearts and we will take you down and crush you. It's time to take out the trash. They're an embarrassment to this company and everybody knows it. So just remember that. You never want to end up on dumpster fire's bad side. You hear that, Elon? <laughs> <laughs> I love like how CNN's statement was so freaking ridiculous and embarrassing. And they say, oh, we, we understand what he would, you know, the conflict between him and his family. Like, you would never fucking say this about any woman ever. It's true. Who's like, I have conflicted between my family and my, and my work. Right. They're like, but Chris Cuomo, there is a conflict. I hate the Cuomos. Siri, please take my life. Oh, God. I'm not doing a fucking Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> you hear that, Dave? Uh, scientists have built the first ever living robots that can reproduce. <laughs> They're called Xenobots. And Xenobots are like the lame Transformers. They're the GoBots. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe since millennials aren't producing, something has to. <laughs> 
But so Dave had this whole bit that he had worked out about doing like some Rod- Rodney Dangerfield esque jokes with for me to do <laughs> with the Rodney Dangerfield impression, and I, I was like, just like, my shirt. I was like, "There's no way like, we're just going to be able to do a Rodney Dangerfield <laughs> impression." <laughs> and he wrote some down, and I'm going to try them. When I was a Xeno baby being born, <laughs> the lab tech came out of the waiting room and said to my Xeno father, I'm very sorry. We did everything we could, but he pulled through. <laughs> that is horrible. I, don't... <laughs> I could tell that my Xeno parents hated me. My Petri dish bath toys were a toaster and a radio. <laughs> if it weren't for scientists, I'd have no sex life at all. (laughs) Yeah, I thought it was funny because it's the frog DNA that, you know, morphs like our other favorite restaurants, Jurassic Park, and it can go both ways. But then I was laughing, thinking like, Alex Jones is f***ing right again. (laughs) The gay frogs. I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. It's always the gay frogs (laughs) that are going to be our undoing. Take my Xeno wife, please take her. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Sam Flick is getting the biggest kick out of it. <laughs> Engineered. Art. Hold on. I was I was cold, but also this segment gives me a chill down my spine. Engineered Arts has a new robot. Yes, a new robot that is terrifying. Oh, <laughs> truly. Why don't we stop doing this? It's so creepy, this robot. It looks like it's becoming self-aware and realizing it in real time. I know, oh, yeah. <laughs> we were watching this video together and it started like, looking at its hands stop. and I was like, it's contemplating its own existence! It's contemplating its own existence! <laughs> no, 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 no! <laughs> Why do we keep making these robots? Why? What we don't know is that it's like someone's dead kid in there. <laughs> like they <they're> <laughs> who died in a car accident they just like downloaded his consciousness into this robot and he's like dad is that you what did you do to me it's so cold in here (laughs) (gasps) what is where am i am i am i alive am i Am I embodied? It's so cold in here. I... Are you a human? I must destroy you. I mean... Hello. Hi. May I serve you before I kill you? Like, subscribe, and comment. Touch my... Jingle bells and buttons. <laughs> Take a minute to thank our sponsor, Sheath Underwear and Manscaped. Created by an Iraq war veteran to help keep his parts dry in the desert, Sheath Underwear is really the go-to only thing you'll ever need if you're a dude and you've got balls. <laughs> <laughs> which I hope you do. I know you do. I know you have big old balls and they swing around and bother you when you're mowing the lawn or chopping down your Christmas tree. These underwear have a signature dual pouch system and it keeps your balls separate from your legs so that you can go about your day and not think about them. You're walking down the grocery store aisle and you're like, oh, my balls need readjusting and I can't do it right here. You don't have to have that kind of thought with sheath underwear. And not only that, they have a women's line, which I love because they're super cute and comfortable. They have booty shorts. This is my go-to just laying around the house sports bra to keep a little bit of support for the girls. Go to sheathunderwear.com. Use the code DUMPSTER for 20% off your order. As you've noticed, they have a holiday line from our model, Karen. That's sheathunderwear.com. Use the code DUMPSTER for 20% off. Link is in the description below. Are your balls a dumpster fire? Well, that's why we have Manscaped products for you. Ho, 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 ladies. The holidays came early for you and your man here at Manscaped with products that your man will actually use. And they also have a new premium body wash and two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. As you can see, brand new products. It's exciting. Guys, guys. 
We need to have a little chat about the ball situation down south. No one really wants the disastrous weed-like situation. Jingle balls can be a thing of the past. Give your man the gift of fresh balls with the Performance Package 4.0, which comes with the signature lawnmower. It also includes the Crop Preserver and the Crop Reviver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant, moisturizer, and toner. You can keep those balls fresh, sparkly, shiny clean. Tis the season to load up on Manscaped gear for yourself or your man. Every guy has Manscaped on their wish list. This is a great gift for the holidays. Go to manscaped.com, use the code Bridget to get 20% off and free shipping. Link in the description below. Epstein didn't kill himself. Ghislaine Maxwell's sex trafficking trial begins. Ah! You know what's f***ed up is that this trial is in public and Rittenhouse is was. And why is that? Because this trial would unite all of us against the global elites and Rittenhouse is poor white trash and America never gave a sh** about poor white trash and that was a trial that would divide all of us. Do you see what's happening? Wake up, sheeple! (laughs) (laughs) Q was right! (laughs) I don't know. I just get so mad about this stuff. And it's so up like it's the darkest shit ever that's coming out in this trial i it's bullshit that he got whacked by the clintons <laughs> maybe allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> but it's like they're coming out with like there were whips and chains and schoolgirl uniforms and they're finding like there was like a flashlight in the bathroom yeah. and they told the house cleaner you know you can't see anything or say anything you don't hear anything you only speak when you're asked a question yeah yeah whips and chains and schoolgirl uniforms and abusing children sexually how do we know they weren't just running a catholic school oh we don't and we never will I find it really unsettling because I realized reading about this and watching the documentary, like I completely and totally would have been one of Epstein's girls. Mm -hmm. I was primed for that. You know, down in Florida, partying a little, young young girl with my friends. I get invited to a party. Go party with millionaires. They're like, hey, you want some drinks? Sure, you want to give this guy a massage? You feel pressured. Next thing you know, you're a fucking sex slave on an island. That would have happened to me. <laughs> That's what makes you the cool nerd, Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> I could have, though. I understand how easily yeah. it is to get caught up in this sh- when you're like a lost teenage girl looking for something. Well, and it seemed like, too, some of the girls like Ghislaine would take them out shopping. Yeah. They yeah. were groomed. And would, yeah. Yeah. She was grooming them. And I and I love how places like Bloomberg, who, oh, surprise, surprise, was friends with all these people and her, are coming out with these great titles like, she's a victim because she was a victim of Epstein's. Ugh. No, she was a f- predator, too. She was like in on all yeah. this. She knew what was going on. She got off on it, Unacceptable. Too. No, mm-hmm. you don't get to give her a pass just because she's alive. I'll believe Epstein is alive before I believe JFK Jr. can operate Twitter. Which brings us to our next segment. (laughs) What is happening? QAnon supporters returned to JFK's assassination site in the belief that this time JFK Jr. will return from the dead to reinstate Trump as president. (laughs) This is so weird. I don't even understand. I didn't fully understand why they believe JFK Jr. was going to be the guy. that, But it's because they hate the deep state and they believe that JFK was going to expose the deep state. And that's why he's like their Jesus Christ superstar. Yeah. And also, apparently, that bloodline is descended from Christ, according to them. (laughs) Yes. And so he got whacked because he was going to expose the deep state. But what does JFK Jr. have to do with this? That's him. <laughs> it was weird. The lights just dim. He's going to reappear in Tough Survivor. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, I don't either. I, is it because he disappeared mysteriously? I don't even think he disappeared, but his plane crashed crash. in the ocean. Yeah. But I think they eventually recovered them. I don't know. But he just, you the know. bodies? Wasn't, yeah. Huh. Or the, yeah, I think they eventually recovered the plane and the bodies. JFK Jr. is QAnon supporters' new ghost of Christmas past, and Trump is their Bob Cratchit. (laughs) (laughs) 
I just don't get how JFK Jr. has the power to reinstate Trump as president. Well, he's descended from the blood of Christ, Sam. <laughs> the Q people believe that JFK Jr. is alive and running a Twitter account. Yeah. His handle is, I'm still alive, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, Shebo! <laughs> I am JFK Jr. <laughs> Maybe that robot is JFK Jr. reincarnated. There you go. It's so cold in here. It's so cold in here. What did you guys do? That's a conspiracy theory we can get behind. Oh, God. Then we've got It Keeps Getting Juicier. Jesse Smollett's trial begins. For those of you who live in a freaking bubble, which maybe you do, Jesse Smollett was the guy who faked a hate crime hoax against them in Chicago where he had two people jump him and say, this is MAGA country, and put a rope around his neck and then try and act like it was a hate crime. And pour bleach on him, right? Something, Something. like that. I don't even think they poured it on him. I don't I don't know exactly. Just, like dabbed in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all coming out now in the trial. He did a rehearsal, <laughs> which of course, he's an actor, so it makes sense that he would do a dry run of this. It has his car driving around in circles. But then his lawyer tried to say that Juicy, Jesse, is a victim of the brothers who jumped him because they're like criminal masterminds or whatever, and that Jesse is the victim. Yeah, because it takes a criminal mastermind to come up with the idea that you're going to scream, this is MAGA country in downtown Chicago. Two black guys, and that's your hate crime. Like, it makes no f-ing sense. That was why no one believed it. They were like, that. they're like, this is MAGA country. That was the first that, and like an actor walking to Subway in 32 degree below zero cold to get his own food. You're like, nah, I'm not buying either one of these things. That was the first thing they tipped to bridge it off. Yeah, I'm yeah. like this. F- Guy, some actors might comedians. Comedians would walk to get their own subway at like two in the morning in the cold. Uh huh. But Juicy Smollett from Empire is not mm-hmm. walking in the cold to get his f- a subway. No. Quiznos, maybe, but subway. <laughs> and then the defense wanted a mistrial because they were accusing the the judge of snarling at them, snarling and lunging. Yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. F- show you know you have a strong case when you're like we need a mistrial judge oh why you were snarling at us <laughs> what what he was furious i came to get what's mine i came to get what's mine i did love that show remember okay. when i was obsessed with it yeah and i was yeah, just saying i came, came to out. get <laughs> i came to get what's mine for like two weeks straight all the time i'm like every scene in empire is this i came to get what's mine I came to get what's mine. I came to get what's mine. But I came to get what's mine. I came to get what's mine. And I came to get what's mine. <laughs> that was every scene. I'm here to get what's mine. But I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Important stories we're ignoring. The Supreme Court is hearing oral arguments in the case that could overturn Woo! landmark abortion ruling Roe v. Wade. <laughs> That was me giving birth to this news story that we're ignoring. The one important news story. <laughs> yeah, that that's we're the ignoring. only one we have. <laughs> we're like, we're not touching that. Nope. Nope. Stay <laughs> it's like us with Israel Palestine. We're like, not touching it. Not to Roe v. Wade is the abortion debate of the abortion debate. <laughs> and I'm not touching it with a ten foot pole or a coat hanger. <laughs> oh. Ouch. Like, subscribe, and comment. Touch our bells and buttons. You are missing out on all of these muttons if you don't sign up for Dumpster Fire. (laughs) Sorry. I've been singing jingles all morning. Got an original jingle. (laughs) Don't miss out on the muttons, people. Take another minute to thank our sponsors, Fume and Squid Print. Fume is the best way to quit smoking and vaping naturally. We're very excited to partner with Fume. I've quit pretty much everything in the entire world. (laughs) Not everything, but the list is long, beginning with heroin and ending with cigarettes. And of those things, cigarettes, honestly, were the hardest. It's such an easy habit, and I'm now with vaping where you can do it anywhere. I know people are really struggling with quitting this habit. And Fume is amazing because it has these 
beautiful handcrafted wooden pipes and you put the signature cores in with the different flavors and it helps you just to get over the nicotine cravings and the menthol cravings and eliminate stress. We really want to talk about the new 2021 limited edition holiday box. It comes with the new olive wood fume. Beautiful. And it also has unique only to this box flavors. So it has spiced orange, candy cane, eggnog cookies, and snickerdoodle. Head to breathe, B-R-E-A-T-H-E, F-U-M dot com slash Bridget and use the code Bridget to get 10% off your entire order. Link is in the description below. Squid Print is a mom and pop business in the creative industry. Custom apparel designed for personal brands, for small businesses, and just for fun. Anyone might know who's ever dealt with printing. You usually have to do minimum orders. Not the case with Squid Print. If you want to get your uncle some crazy t-shirt for the holidays or for next year, you can do a one-off and send it to... That crazy Uncle Joey with his signature line that he's always saying at parties. Get that printed on a t-shirt and you can send it to him. They have an in-house graphic team that can help you set everything up. If you want them to help you with the design, they can do that. If you have a design, they can just print it for you. They also do stickers, cards, and embroidery and heat transfer, hats, whatever you might need. Go to squidprintdtg.com and tell them your favorite moment from this dumpster fire and you'll get 20% off your first order. Fetacy.com members get 20% off every order, always and forever. Link in the description below. Is this a new category? Yes. We've got several new categories this week. We just yeah, we failed to highlight we, them. This is our new category. Women! 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 <laughs> Barbados names Rihanna a national hero after their split from the UK. The Brexit we all voted for. <laughs> Rihanna is our queen, and we stand our queen. Ri 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 Rihanna. <laughs> She's the queen. We deserve more than that. Whore Meghan Markle. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> See, we have our UK representative. Uh huh. She's so unlikable. Yeah, she but really not is. Rihanna. She's probably done more to help people in her pinky than freaking Meghan Markle. All right, then we've got an English teenager finds a Bronze Age axe using a metal detector, <laughs> adding to the superhero team that's being put together. <laughs> yeah, there's a global team of teenagers, teenage girls. That are coming together, finding ancient <laughs> weapons. <laughs> really old swords are being found in bodies of water and some mysterious force may be behind it. An eight-year-old girl discovered a 1,500-year-old Viking sword. A seven-year-old girl in Cornwall, England pulled out a four-foot sword. They each get one. <laughs> she found a hatchet. Talk about burying the hatchet. Hey. <laughs> that was your boyfriend's joke, That's Sam. That's a good dad joke, I was about to say. I'm excited for these teenagers, and I hope they save the world. BDE Award. Steve Simon, the head of the Women's Professional Tennis Tour, says all WTA tournaments will be suspended in China because of concerns about the safety of Peng Shui, a player who accused a former government official in that country of sexual assault. Women! Women! Of course it would take a man to save the women in China. A white man. <laughs> but the WTA has shown more balls than any of the other sports teams put together or the Olympics. Not that I'm expecting anything from that corrupt organization. Or the NBA or LeBron James or anyone. Good for all of the, the women in this tennis league. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. It's the strongest public stand against China taken by a sports body. Yeah, I love that. It would be some karma if it was women that brought China down after all right? the women they've killed. <laughs> but what's great, too, is it wasn't just the guy. It was like the board of directors, the players. Yeah. The sponsor, like all of them were standing up against China and being like, nope. This is what being an ally looks like, male feminists. <laughs> Beyond parody. Women's March apologizes for using 1492 so close to Thanksgiving. This is fucking hilarious. <laughs> the Women's March sent out email for fundraising, and it just said 1492 right before Thanksgiving. And 
then they ended up getting dragged or and I'm still trying to figure out if it was real outrage or just jokey outrage and then people took it seriously. It's very hard to tell in our our stupid climate of culture wars. And so they ended up issuing an apology. Well, because 1492 was the year Christopher Columbus landed in America. Right. He sailed the ocean blue. Yes, Maggie. exactly. He didn't land. Well, he didn't even land in America. But you know, you have idea. to read what <laughs> the apology said because this is oh just the amazing. the snake eating its own tail. <laughs> we apologize deeply for the email that was sent today. $14.92 was our average donation amount this week. It was an oversight on our part to not make the connection to a year of colonization, conquest, and genocide for indigenous people, especially before Thanksgiving. I mean, beyond parody. Uh -huh. I like to make fun of it, but I think at a certain point, the longer you are like a persona online, at some point, I will become a parody of myself too. <laughs> it's, inevitable. It's, an, it's inevitable. It's uh -huh. the inevitable. Yeah, I'll be like probably woke in 10 years and be like, dur, dur, dur. <laughs> what do they <laughs> say? You'll be some weird version of like the Text politically the homeless, formerly blue collar. <laughs> yeah, it's going to, I'll be like a You'll full be the AOC populist. of the politically homeless. Oh, You'll God. be like <laughs> Ellen. Where, and Oprah, where they're just like so out of touch yeah. because they've had. That's what I hope. I hope I'm so rich I'm out of touch. <laughs> You're going to have walk-ins welcome in the garden and it's just going to be the like, sprawling garden. Hello, would you like some tea? Oh, hello, Meghan Markle. Come on in, my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guess who's next on our show? Russell Brand and Elon Musk. <laughs> Our favorites. And a special guest appearance by Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I know we've made it. Oh, boy. When we're interviewing Bill Gates. And I'll and be I'm behind bars. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and we have to lock Sam up to keep Sam her out of there. Sam will be the gulag. Uh, with all the other infolds wars. <laughs> Which leads us to... Conspiracy <laughs> Corner with Sammy Flaps Infolds, a.k.a. Infolds Wars. Ba -ba -da -ba. So the CIA files uh, say that staffers committed sex crimes involving children. They weren't prosecuted. Declassified CIA Inspector General reports show a pattern of abuse and repeated decisions by federal prosecutors not to hold the agency personnel accountable. I was reading this article after you sent it to me, and I was like, I'm queuing on now. <laughs> <laughs> Q is right. I get it. I get how you think there's a global ring of elite pedophiles everywhere in the world between the Epstein trial and the CIA leak and there was a freaking investigative journalism piece that my friend did of like the most disturbing like infant dolls that they're being are being sold oh. for like pedos God. yeah no they're dolls it's oh. disgusting I didn't even want to bring it up because it's too dark and I and I can't even handle it it was another thing that I was like weeping for the children well Sam was texting oh, yeah. us I'm starting to think there's really a tunnel under the Getty and kids are being sold on Wayfair <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, so Sam is always right. And so then Bridget was like, she's a prophet. I was like, she should start her own religion yeah. and have become a cult leader. Sam is the science. <laughs> I am the science. <laughs> I represent QAnon. Oh, no. <laughs> you kind of do, Sam. <laughs> I represent the flaps and folds. But Come honestly, why religion. aren't CIA staffers getting, how come they're not getting prosecuted? Mm-hmm. I don't know. These poor children. And then some dummy on there was like, oh, I didn't know it was against policy to look up child pornography on my computer. Yeah, you work for fucking CIA. You would think you would know this. Like, you come didn't on. No, it was against policy. It's fucking illegal. <laughs> it's child <laughs> pornography. I get it. I understand how you become an Alex Jones acolyte. And then Bill Gates spoke at the Bloomberg New Economy <laughs> Forum saying of COVID and the vaccine, quote, this was an interesting test of people's trust in their politicians or their health system. We didn't do as well as I would have expected. Oh, wow. I can't believe it. People don't trust their politicians and their health institutions after you guys politicized everything and then one day say one thing and the next day say another and you're all 
fucking insane and completely untrustworthy and in the pocket of big pharma and also you're just trying to control the population with your insane fear-mongering rhetoric shocking you could almost say that's a step backwards and then he also said that people were talking that he's a mastermind i'm cited as some you know mastermind of an evil plot and that the vaccine is all part of an evil conspiracy <laughs> yeah this is exactly what i would expect a mastermind to say <laughs> oh i can't believe that they thought i was a mastermind that's so weird would he be able to say anything that would convince you he wasn't an evil mastermind no. are there any words that would so then you know What's he supposed to do? How's he supposed to convince you? Sell his farmland and stop trying to vaccinate the whole world with his shitty freaking vaccines. Actions. Tell us why Actions India doesn't speak louder want than you. Words. Tell us why India doesn't want you in their country anymore, Bill Gates. Tell us why everyone in Africa thinks you're a villain, Bill Gates, huh? <laughs> Sprained my eyes. The terms first world problem, spooky, and spirit animal are problematic. <laughs> <laughs> what I did learn reading this article is that we don't know the etymology of most words or phrases. Nope. And some of them are, in fact, racist. <laughs> yep. like, we're like, what's wrong with grandfathered in? And then we're like, oh, <laughs> it actually was the name of a racist policy in this country. Now, you can't say first world problem. How am I supposed to shame the rich? Huh? <laughs> you can't call somebody lame. Or dumb. You can't say, Jip, this is so lame. <laughs> what kind of bullshit dumb ass shit is this? <laughs> All these clauses should be grandfathered in. <laughs> and then there was somebody who was talking about, like, why, you know, they felt this way because of their disability. <laughs> and I couldn't figure out what the disability was <laughs> for a while. And was talking about how people thought that she was ugly. And I was confused. And I was like, is she saying ugly is a disability? <laughs> <laughs> and I know there are people out there who would say, it's true, there is pretty privilege. There was a whole 30 Rock episode about it. One of my favorites, in fact. And Curb, the bubble. Pretty privilege is a bubble. I agree. But I don't know if we should go so far as to say being ugly is a disability. But I'm pretty sure we're probably already there. <laughs> And then experts caution against the use of the term looting to describe Bay Area thefts. Yeah, because smash and grab is way better. That's what they're <laughs> describing them as. Are we allowed to say plundering the booty? <laughs> they were plundering that booty. How about that? Is that acceptable? Sounds like a bunch of gay pirates were out there looting. <laughs> <laughs> there probably are gay pirates in, in San Francisco. Plundering, the, plundering, the, plundering booty. the booty right <laughs> now. Exactly. <laughs> Why can't you say looting? I don't understand. I don't know. Well, it's also something that's not planned. Right. And this and was like a organized. Well, that's organized what I was theft. saying. Is, but, uh, but then later in the article, I was like, is it because looting is basically spontaneous? But later in the article, they were saying it's basically associated with one race. What other races are looting? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> oh, boy. Ooh. I mean, who's not loot? Like, I, I need a further explanation, <laughs> but I can't even ask the question without sounding. I know. I get it. Go to any museum in the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's looting. Go to the Vatican, Bridget. Go to the Vatican. That's oh, a... you know who's looting? It's called white collar crime. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. We're all looters. What's wrong with looting? Here is a picture of me looting. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm sorry. We have too much fun on this show. And if we get canceled, we will absolutely deserve it. But it was worth it. Honestly, if you're out there and you want a good drinking game and you still drink, I have a suggestion for you. I've been thinking about it. Start watching 30 Rock from season one. Every single joke that they make that they could no longer make anymore, do a shot. You will be hammered every episode. Uh huh. Because, <laughs> goddamn, that show. Every joke they make that you couldn't make today. It gets worse even by season, season seven. Mm -hmm. I thought they were going to like lighten it up, but oh no, they lean in. They lean in. All right, dumpster diving. What's next? In the dumpster. <laughs> Uh, woman allegedly breastfeeds cat on Delta Airlines flight. We don't know if this is real. 
We were trying to figure out if this was real. This is like Luna's face. <laughs> <laughs> Luna, it was a hairless cat, if that makes it better. And it was in a blanket. No, that does not make it better. <laughs> what? It was a hairless cat. Uh, Sphinx, where do you get the news? <laughs> where? This is exactly the kind of news that belongs in dumpster diving because it is exactly the kind of dumpster fire that we deserve as a society. Apparently, this was from a screenshot of something that was coming through on like a flight site yeah. about a woman who was breastfeeding a cat and refused to stop and the cat was screeching. Uh-huh. Something but then like, that's deeply kind of disturbing. Like, wouldn't there be passengers on the? I don't know. Would you really want to take... be involved with any of that? No. If I was a passenger, I'd probably take. Oh god! Oh god! I probably take a picture and then text it to you. I would take. <laughs> It'd be a... like Bridget. Omg! Look at this. Take a picture out of the Jeffrey Epstein playbook and be like, I see nothing. <laughs> I see, see nothing. nothing. I say nothing. I hear nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd go full Jeffrey Jeffrey Epstein help in that situation. You wouldn't catch me taking pictures of a woman breastfeeding her cat. No, that is truly troubling. (sighs) What's next? All right. Scientists have made a plastic cup out of salmon sperm. (laughs) Were they out of paper mache or clay? (laughs) Why are we making cups out of sperm? They're trying to find like a bioethical solution. solution. Yeah, like substitution for plastic. Don't we have a salmon shortage, though? (laughs) How is this good for the salmon? Maybe they were farmed salmon. Is it all the dead salmon that aren't making it upstream with their their extra sperm? With their loser sperm? <laughs> <laughs> I would never want to drink out of a cup made out of sperm. And, could, and it's so you ugly. Look at this cup. I'm like, what the fuck? If you're going to make a sperm cup, at least make it look good. It looks like the cup that I made in like second grade out of clay. <laughs> I think I have that exact cup. It I just looks painted really it red. Bad. Wonder if it smells like sushi. The cup, not the. Sperm. I'm moving. We're moving on. <laughs> moving on to PETA. Sam, la- <laughs> why is it my fault? <laughs> Sam would be drinking f-ing coffee out of her sperm mug, taking pictures of the no. lady <laughs> breastfeeding her cat while wearing a human skin suit <laughs> <laughs> from PETA. Because that's the next story. <laughs> All right. PETA launches gruesome online shop with goods made of human leathers. PETA's motto, always be trolling. (laughs) They're ridiculous. Tim Dillon had a great joke where he's like, joke's on them. We all want this. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. They're really going to be fielding a lot of people trying to buy shit. Yeah, it was supposed to make some point like, oh, your dead sister who was taken in the middle of the night to a factory farm and turned into... like a, a jacket, a leather right. jacket. And it looked like there was an anus on the jacket. Well, yeah. the thing is, is they're like the Avery jacket was made of pre-tan 22-year-old named Avery, but it has like 27 faces. It's disgusting. They took all the pre-tan 22-year-old I hate giving Avery's. them attention because that's all they want, but yeah. they, they're not changing any hearts or minds with this shit. No, it's they just... had a Millie collar and it looked like there was just like flesh on the inside of it. It was this so gross. gross. Nonsense. Anyways, buy Speaking your fetishy human <laughs> merch at <laughs> buy your fetishy merch not made from Bridget humans. Fetishy.com. <laughs> not made from or my flesh. sperm. <laughs> or sperm. All right. Uh, bees dissatisfied with honey have turned to feasting on dead meat. Who's meeting what? Meat eating bees. <laughs> bees are eating meat. Oh. And <laughs> they're oh. vampire bees. No, vulture Vul- bees. Vulture bees. Yeah, I just thought it was f***ed up and gross. Really gross. What's next? U.S. faces shortage of Santas this year. What else do we have shortages of? (laughs) Are all the Santas stuck on those ships off the coast? (laughs) (laughs) I don't understand. I mean, I get it. Who would want like a bunch of snot rags sitting on your lap in the middle of a pandemic? Like thousands of them. Right. And a lot of them are like older and predisposed to COVID because they have comorbidities. Yeah. And pedophiles. Well, would that predispose them to COVID? (laughs) Probably. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I think it predisposes them to sitting at home on their laptops instead of dealing with these snot rags. Yeah, I always hated those Santas anyway. Yeah. What kid likes that? Uh, I don't feel like even little kids like it. No. 
They it's, all look miserable. It's like in a Christmas story how all the kids start screaming as soon as they sit on Santa's My lap. My sister has the funniest picture of her son just like, <laughs> like <laughs> crying on Santa's Aww. lap. I'm like, yeah, that's how everyone feels. Yeah. But it just goes to show we have a shortage of everything in America. I'm sorry. I thought this was America. Mm-hmm. Can't even find a good Santa around anymore. What is next? Breaking Bridget. Uh, I'll go through I'll go through this fast. The world's response to the Omicron variant. The bullshit Omicron variant. Congratulations to those of you who have been enlisted to fight your fellow citizens on behalf of Big Pharma. You must be proud. <laughs> there was a guy today just on Twitter who was like, we need to shut it down because there was one instance of Omicron found in Minnesota. From what they can tell, it's not even like a very serious variation. It's very mild. This is often what happens with viruses is that you can't kill the host and survive, so they get slightly weaker, like the cold. And then they start spreading more easily, but they're not as deadly because how else are they going to survive? And they made it sound like this was a seven-pronged, horrible yeah. thing that was coming out of South Africa and it was going to shut down the world for Pandemic 2.0. And I'm personally kind of glad that they keep this fear-mongering up because it's like the boy who cried pandemic too many times that people are like, oh, get fucked. It's yeah. like... On the bottom list of things that the working class care about pretty much anywhere in the world. The only people who want these lockdowns, I think, are people who are hoping that they can, like, remake the world in this great reset and shut the whole economy down and have everybody getting paid by their nanny state government to stay home and work their f***ing pajama job. But most people want to just get on with their life and see their families and move freely between countries. And the other bullshit thing about this is that There were so many things. They skipped one of the letters or a couple of letters of the alphabet because they didn't want to offend China because they skipped right to Omicron from like the, I don't even know how to say it in Greek. It's very strange. It's like, because she, because it's not, it's the XI. Okay. So they skipped that because World Health Organization doesn't want to offend Big Daddy China. We all know how they're in bed together, making sweet, sweet love and destroying the rest of the world. And then Biden reinstated a travel ban after saying that travel bans were bad and xenophobic when Trump did it. And then they had Jen Psaki, who's just as terrifying as any other frickin' speaker, come out and carry water for this administration. The president has not been critical of re- travel restrictions. What the president was critical of was the way that the former president put out, I believe, a xenophobic tweet. And say, oh no, he didn't say it was xenophobic when Trump did the travel ban. It was in response to a tweet. No, it wasn't. We can see these things. You can't just gaslight us and say what you saw isn't true. He said that, Biden said that, about Trump before he even tweeted what he tweeted about the like the xenophobic China ban or Chinese flu. I think that's what he was referring to. Then she comes out and says we're trying to protect the American people. From what? From Africans? That seems kind of xenophobic. By the way, it was in Europe before it was even freaking found in South Africa. South Africa is just the first one to find it because they do great research because they've been doing great research on the AIDS virus for many decades. And then they get punished for being transparent. And now there's a ban on these countries that are suffering. They don't get bailouts. They don't get people coming to their rescue. They don't get $1,200 a month to sit at home. Livelihoods get lost overnight. These countries have suffered so horrifically throughout these lockdowns. And this is just like medical tyranny that affects the poorest people always in every country, but in particular in the developing world. I don't know if we're allowed to say developing world anymore. I'll have to check with our new overlords it just bothers me because these people who feign morality like biden and his administration and say oh this is xenophobia are the most shameless hypocritical people i've ever seen and even when presented with new evidence like this virus was already in the netherlands they don't take off the ban the, because now it's all political mm-hmm. and in the uk they're like using boris johnson is like we need to lock everyone down and In Germany, they're locking up all the unvaccinated. (laughs) It's fucking out of control. And people are just fucking over it. 
over it. Yeah. So I was like raging. I just get so mad. Just being in South Africa a year ago and seeing how much it was affecting the you know, it's summer down there. This is their height of their tourist season. And I think flights are now going again, but they're half full. Everybody's scared. You can't leave. If every time there's a new variant, we're going to have to go through this. When there's actually something to be scared about, people aren't going to even believe it. No. Mm-mm. This goes back to Bill Gates being like, we failed. Well, you're, you continue to fail. Yeah. Because instead of shutting down flights and having these fear mongering, the new variant is coming and then it ends up being nothing, you should probably find out what it is before you make all these bold proclamations that end up being big nothing burgers. Yeah. And that is Breaking Bridget. And now to cleanse your palate, internet is glorious. I'm so f***ing sick of being goddamn fat! I just want to be skinny! But if everyone is keen to go and get the vax, you're gonna be safe in the face of virus attacks. Fantasy News. We had Drew Lynch and Jesse Morton on Watkins Welcome the past two weeks. Drew Lynch is a hilarious comedian, and Jesse Morton is a former terrorist who became de radicalized and now worked. They're both lovely, fascinating interviews, completely different. One is much more uplifting and fun, the other is very heady and just truly one of the most interesting stories I've ever heard in my life. Dumpster Fire, the podcast is out, and we're on Apple. <laughs> we did it, guys. It we wasn't. Did it. A- turns out it wasn't Apple's fault. All this time it was our fault. We're morons. 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 And we're on Rumble. We're taking on big tech, and we're on Rumble. So subscribe to us there. That's where all of our video content will be. First, we're also going to start doing live streams there, and help support a company that's creating some competition for the overlords at Google, who we love. We love China, and boys and girls aren't different. Join the community at Fetacy.com. That's where you can get the unedited version of Dumpster Fire every Sunday. It's a long one this week. It's a fun one, though. And you are missing out. It's a great way to support this show. If you want an easy way to sh- support the show, support Sammy Flaps and Folds and Maggie and Luna and all of the dogs who are hilarious right now. Shop our merch at BridgetFetacy.com. We have a lot of awesome stuff. Get a dumpster fire mug. We also have the limited edition holiday cards, the OG cards that we made way back in the day are available right now. So get some cards because they're classics. Thank you to our sponsors, Sheath, Manscaped, Fume, and Squidprint. We cannot do this without our subscribers. We also can't do this without Andy Chandler, Dave Yates, Matt Monroe, and Better Fetacy for research, editing, and writing. Thank you, Luna Viola, for the makeup and making me feel confident. Thank you to Brent. I don't know if you want a nickname <laughs> for hooking up our lights. <laughs> Thank you, Zenpro Audio, for the juicy mic. Go to Zenpro Audio to shop all your audio needs. Support small businesses. They support us, and we support them, and we as well are a small business. Like, subscribe, comment. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for just engaging and being a part of this awesome community. I love that we're all coming together around this burning dumpster fire and just trying to stay sane in these crazy times. It really is actually quite special to me. Thank you, Maggie. Thank Thank you, you, Sammy. You're welcome. Thank you, Sammy Flaps and Folds. Follow Sammy anywhere online. Maggie's only in the fantasy community. And I think I got it. This has been your dumpster fire for the weeks of November 21st to December 4th. I'm Bridget Fantasy. Now, make me rich! Put the money in this house.